For more on what to expect heading into year end, joining us now is Rebecca Patterson, Chief Investment Officer at Bessemer Trust. Rebecca, great to have you with us. Thanks. Good to be here. Um, I'm going to pose the same question that we opened the show with. Uh, will we see this rally going into year end with, the po you know, with this powerful, supposedly, seasonal wind behind us? Whether we like it or not, I think most of us don't like it. We are at the whim of the trade deal a bit. Um, we're seeing the short-term market reactions to every tweet that comes out on this thing. And I, I agree generally with the conversation that was had that it, it would help the president's re-election chances to have this happen in the spring. I don't know if what's happening now postponing it as strategy or it's just because Navarro and Lighthizer really would prefer harder line. And then you have Hong Kong, which I don't think was strategy. I think that's just what happened. And the... the Bill getting signed, the reaction, not letting military ships and, and uh, military folks go to Hong Kong, this makes it more complicated. And that alone could be a reason why this doesn't happen until the spring, beyond any strategy. But I do think eventually we get some form of a deal. I think the president and his team know a deal will be helpful to them, even if it's marketing more than reality uh, in terms of next year, getting that support under the economy. But will it happen this year? Will we get tariffs on the 15th? No idea. And I wouldn't try to trade it because I think it's almost impossible to have a comparative advantage. You're mentioning in the green room that you were concerned about the additional tariffs placed on uh, steel and aluminum imports from South America. Big side there. Oh, oh, no, I was going to my zen happy place because it's, it's, it's just really unfortunate. Yeah. I mean, these are countries that are, are both, I mean, Brazil's looking a little better, but these are countries that are struggling. South America in general is struggling right now. And to, I understand we want to help American farmers. Of course we do. But to put tariffs on these countries saying that they're devaluing their currencies, well, their currencies aren't devaluing because the government has some evil intent to make their exports more competitive. It's because of capital flight, because things there are imploding. So to put tariffs on makes their economy worse, which will make the capital flight worse, which will make the currencies fall even further. So in my opinion, this step actually made a bad problem worse even if there is some possible, maybe, benefit for American farmers. So I think the whole thing is really a shame. Rebecca, back to the trade deal with China in particular. Um, what do you think is priced in? Because a few months ago we were talking about a grand deal, one and done sort of thing, and that would be the, the release, you know, the biggest impediment, let's just say, to global growth. But then we've chopped it up into threes. I, I kind of am of the mindset that I think both sides would love to see a skinny phase one deal get done, and then you might not see anything else until after the election. So I guess my question is, is a phase one deal that's skinny, it's about soybeans, it's about like some, is, is that a, a sell on the news? Or have we already priced all that in? My bias would be it is a sell on the news. I think maybe not all hope is priced in, but clearly a lot has changed from September when we've got better sentiment towards the trade deal and the PMI, the business sentiment data has, has stabilized. All of that has helped cyclical assets, non-U.S. markets, export-sensitive markets. So some hope is priced in. If the deal is only what we expect, and maybe we roll back the September tariffs, but that's it, does that really change U.S.-China relationships? Does that change U.S. trade relationships with South America, with Europe, with anyone else? Probably not. And then you add the uncertainty around the U.S. election and what policy shifts we could see on top of it. How would we suddenly see some sustained uptick in CapEx? I just, I, I, even if the economy stabilizes, do we get the, enough of a V-shaped recovery that changes industrial activity? I don't think that's likely. It doesn't mean I'm bearish next year. I just think your upside is going to be limited, even if we get a skinny deal. So skinny let me ask deal. you, with the, skinny deal. <laughs> the like economic skinny Santa. data yeah. being somewhat tepid today, I was surprised to see the bond market sell off somewhat. Do you, I mean, where do you think the Fed is? Why do you think it's sold off? I, I forget, and I apologize, who made the comment earlier, was it you, Tim, that the Fed's done. We're not going to see any, any more so. hikes, certainly, for the foreseeable future, but probably not more cuts either unless things get materially worse. The new inflation regime rolls out next year. What happened in the bond market today? There are days where I say, well, there might have been a corporate deal. There might have been a one-off position being hedged for year-end. On a single day, I don't always think I can make sense of each correlation, but I would say in general... When you see bond yields rise and the dollar weakens, normally that's happening in an environment where people are more bullish on global growth, right? So all bond yields around the world go up and the dollar goes down because U.S. capital goes overseas in search of more attractively valued foreign assets. We saw that during the whole era of the BRICS. So you had rising U.S. yields, but a weakening dollar as capital moved overseas and U.S. current account deficit got better. I'm not suggesting that's what happened today, but if you were looking, what's the environment where we could see that sustained relationship, weaker dollar, higher yields? But basically, you want strong, synchronized global growth. A trade deal could help us with that. 
um, big fiscal stimulus out of Germany. I don't think it's coming anytime soon, but that could help with that. Uh, but other than that, I don't know what that catalyst is. Japan and UK stimulus is coming next year, but that's just to take a bad situation and try to make it neutral. Rebecca, great to see you. Thanks Always good by. to see you too. And Rebecca Patterson. Yes, big fan of the claymation. You have to be, right? I mean, all claymation. Rankin, uh, claymation Rankin is really Bass. underrated. Yes. I mean, who needs CGI when you can have claymation, right? Oh, you, you're kidding, of course. Right? Yes. It's, to it's superior. Let me tell you something. Santa Claus is coming to town. Outstanding. And but Rudolph tonight, tonight. Also claymation tonight. But oh, it, it, much like Stairway oh, to Heaven, enough. which probably got the number one uh, song in a lot of the the, the weekend Thanksgiving mm -hmm. countdowns, most. Over, underrated, overrated song. I think Heat Miser, Snow Miser, oh, yeah. by the That's way, relative one. because yes. it, it was given too much Santa credit. Claus, by the way, right. too. Anyway, You're looking for sorry. the Sorry, had, had to end on that happy note. Thank you. Thank you. you want to she said something really interesting, other than the claymation, claymation bit. Yeah. You know, she said, talking about this potential stimulus in the UK and Japan, that's sort of taking a bad situation and kind of making it stable. And I think that's something that I think we have to look back at what happened in the last few months here in the US. When you th think about these three rate cuts, you think about QE4 that did happen. Our friend uh, Peter Bookbar, who, you know, he says the Fed just fixed that inverted yield curve. That's what they did. And then the repo thing was like kind of quiet QE. I mean, when you think about here, we have an S&P up 25%. It, you know, things might have gotten really ugly this year if we hadn't had that. The dollar was trading at multi-year highs, you know. So, I, I mean, at the end of the day, I think you can look at the S&P and you say, all right, things were really good here in the U.S. stock market, stocks globally. But think about what it took to get here this stage 10 years in from the financial crisis. I, I mean, to me, it's very troubling. And so I just think you push out a lot of these problems by making bad situations stable at this stage of the game.